Hey everybody. So um, I got a request by email a long while back from my friend Phil Shapiro, who is um, a blogger, a, a uh, blogger at large for O'Reilly Media, and um, or actually for PC Magazine. I'm sorry. Uh, and he's a big advocate for open source software. He really likes GIMP, really likes Inkscape. And he, um, I'd say he's a follower of the project. And he uh, sent me a request, as I often ask people to do. And certainly if you have something you'd like to see me uh, do, certainly either send me an email or better yet, uh, jump onto Facebook and um, leave a message at facebook.com slash 365 sketches. At any rate, um, he sent me a quote that uh, I thought was a really interesting quote that he wanted to see treated in Inkscape, which is something I do from time to time. I'll take a quote and, and put it into uh, Inkscape or, or GIMP. And um, I wanted to show you sort of how that worked. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, this is a transparent background. That's why we see these checkers, uh, is to sort of indicate that there's there's nothing here, not even an, opa uh, an opaque white. Um, and when I'm working with text, I like to work on top of white so that I can see what the text looks like. So first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. And uh, by default, the layer is the same size as the, uh, as the original uh, canvas, which is currently 600 by 800 in a portrait mode. I'm going to click on white here to add a white layer and you can see now the, the background is still transparent but this new layer here is white. As I add text using the text tool here uh, what's going to happen is you're going to see um, another layer created right so here's the text dialog and I'm gonna hope that I can just paste the content and of course I can so that's great um, and it's in the last font that I used and I'm gonna move this out of the way now so that I can get back to uh, the text tools over here and what I'm gonna do is drag this down here so that the uh, text window is nice and large and I'm going to um, you can see that as you may be able to see that as I move over this part of the open space it turns into a move tool by default if I go over top of some area around the edges it gives me the opportunity to resize the problem here is that um, the text box by default is so large that I'm not going to be able to do anything with it so I'm going to resize and move resize and move until I see the other side of the text box resize and move, resize, and move. This is a really tedious process, but um, one, one thing I can do is I can size down the text. A little bit. And I can also make it uh, right aligned. So I'll resize and move, resize and move. And at this point, I'm going to stop resizing and moving and start adding um, return carriages in order to make the text show up the way that I really want to. You can see that I'm adding return carriages in order to have the text show at just about the width of the window any case where it cuts off this is a rather large quote um, 
and so I'm going to have to size it down again. So I'm going to size it down until I can see the whole thing. And in this particular case, I'm actually going to make this into a separate uh, text layer, the, the actual uh, guy's name who was quoted. So at this point, I'm going to close this window and very nice. Um, I'm going to move this over until I can see the other edge of the text area. Probably just should have sized down before I <laughs> definitely should have sized down. Well, let's go back over. <laughs> so here's my text again. I'm just going to forget about the other edge of it. And uh, one thing you'll note is that the text is running into the other text, and that's because I have this... Uh, line spacing so low it's actually in a negative number so I'm going to increase the number and decrease my font size increase the number decrease my font size and uh, while I love this font absolutely love this font it's not exactly the right font for this purpose so I'm going to go to my collection of fonts and I'm just going to navigate through them in order to see what they look like. You can see that the rest of these fonts actually are all tied up. So I'm going to set this actually to zero. And just tighten it up a bit. and go back to my fonts and keep on looking through. I really like Arial Condensed. Um, but let's see what else there is. So I'll often do this as I'm working on a logo or anything like that. This is nice. This is actually beautiful. Bell MT. I'll have to remember Bell MT. There's an example of a uh, bitmap, I'm sorry, a, um, a dingbat font. I often use that when I'm working with animals or, you know, other objects. That's not bad. I really am looking for a font that um, reflects the feeling of the message. This is, this is actually beautiful. Book Antiqua. Book Antiqua is currently the winner. That's not bad. That's not bad either. This is one of my favorite fonts for this kind of a thing, but I use it quite a bit. Here's an example of. Uh, an inappropriate font for almost any purpose. Comic Sans just makes this uh, very poignant statement just look stupid. I like that. I like that a, quite a bit. So I'm going to go back to my font. I'm going to um, increase my line spacing until no letters are bumping into each other. And decrease my font size.
give it a little bit more space. The text seems really tight. <clears throat> and at this point, I can actually take this text and um, realign it so that it's more appropriate for this font size. Let's see if remembering can come back in there. So in case you've ever heard me talk about uh, the differences between Inkscape and the GIMP, the, this is one of the key differences for me. If I was working in the GIMP, I would have had this done a minute ago or two minutes ago because uh, Inkscape, if I was doing this in Inkscape, it would be done a, a while back because Inkscape is really much better for working with fonts. The GIMP does it, but the, the GIMP is really meant to work with um, photographs as opposed to as opposed to uh, text. But I'm focusing on Inkscape, I'm sorry, the GIMP this year. And so um, I want to try and get more familiar with the limits of the font tool because I work with fonts quite a bit in my design. There you go. That's, that's nice. So again, I'm going to increase the line spacing to give it some space. As far as I'm concerned, it's really a matter of feel. And um, I'll size this up. And because I cut his uh, George's name out, as opposed to just deleting it, I can just uh, paste it back in with a control V. And in this font size now, much better. So I'll close this. Um, I will also play with the color a bit because color is important, especially in design where I'm trying to get a feeling across. I'm going to choose a nice sort of dark red. And now in this new layer in the background that is a white layer, which I'll actually call um, background. And I'll get rid of this one because I don't plan on using it. I will, whoops, yeah, background. Now that I've selected this layer, I can do something like uh, paint into the background with a paintbrush. So when I change to the paintbrush tool, of course, I get all these options here. I'm going to go to my brushes, which always is a bit of a uh, dangerous thing because I have so many brushes loaded in here. Actually, going to go into the sub menu and go from preview size medium to preview size large so that I can get a better sense of what I'm looking at. And that will resize all the brushes to give me a uh, better preview of what I'm looking at. really have to clean out my brushes because it's it's um, it does this it sort of closes the uh, closes the action down so let's try this I'm gonna grab a the star brush
and I'm going to go back to my tool settings and I look at the scale and it's just tiny so I'm going to scale it way up that's much better and uh, I'm going to take the opacity way down to like 17 or maybe 20 and I'm going to grab a color that's related to that red color that I used something like a nice dark dark orange and you can see it's just a subtle little thing in the background really not meant to overpower what's being said but rather just to uh, add an accent to it matter of fact I'm gonna undo that and first I'm gonna add a uh, gradient and the gradient's going to be from, let's say, off tan and uh, to sort of a gray. Let's see how this looks. So again, with my background selected, I'm going to add this gradient. Just see how it looks. That's nice. And I'm going to add another. Uh, layer in between and I'm gonna make this one transparent and so what's happening now is that I'm able to paint on top of the background underneath the text and if I don't like it I can just uh, either hide this layer or delete this layer and it will retain both my text and my background without damaging it so I'll go back to my brush still has the uh, the the brush that I want at the size that I want I'm gonna pick this nice dark orange color and put in there and put in there and it really doesn't affect the text text is still very readable it does not affect the uh, background the background is still very clearly gradiented and um, I think adds a nice accent I'm not crazy about the positioning though so let's undo that paintbrush. I really want it to be sort of up and to the left and down and to the right, almost coming off the page. Very nice. So I'll now save this and of course I'll save it with the rest of my 365 sketches. I'll save it in the order that we have it. There's yesterday's, here's today's. I save it as an XCF so it retains all this layer information and text information. And I'm also going to save a copy in PNG format so that I can share it with you uh, because XCF is, is uh, not as readily able to be seen as PNG is. Save it in the same place with a PNG extension. It gives me a warning that I should export it, but because I already saved as an XCF, um, I'll just say ignore. It gives me the settings for the PNG. I'll save it as defaults. And I'm done. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you, Phil, very much for the suggestion. If anybody else has a suggestion, drop on over to 365 Sketches on Facebook. Uh, the link is in the sidebar on 365sketches.org. And have a great night.